Hi everybody and welcome back to our fertility Q&A. We're going to be joined pretty soon by Dr. Gelman of IVFMD and we encourage you to ask your questions tonight. Um, so we're gonna wait for him to come on and uh, we'll be uh, joining everybody in a few minutes with that. Um, in the meantime, I hope everybody's having a wonderful week. We are um, in, whoop, looks like I do see Dr. Gelman, but he's not on the correct account. So we just need him to join from the um, IVFMD account. And so he'll, uh, so everybody can see us. Um, so uh, we'll wait and see if he can join in a few minutes from that. But in the meantime, um, we are almost in October. So um, we're really excited to hopefully bring in a new year that's gonna bring a lot of uh, joy to everyone. We have had some great success stories in these past few weeks, um, and we've been trying to post them as well. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about things that you can do to help with whatever type of cycle you're doing, whether it's natural, IVF, IUI, um, and try to get uh, some good information on male fertility as well tonight. I'd like to, we do have a few questions that you guys have submitted beforehand. Um, so we're gonna go into detail about answering those. And if you didn't get a chance to submit your questions, um, definitely please do that um, because we'll, you can do that during our live session tonight. Um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Farah Duro and I'm a reproductive acupuncturist. Uh, I practice at Florida Complete Wellness and I've been practicing since 2001. Um, I am a fellow of the American Board of Oriental Reproductive Medicine and uh, we, as a group of acupuncturists, we actually focus on um, female fertility issues. We work with male issues as well, um, and also work with endometriosis, PCOS, um, painful periods, uh, whether it's endometriosis or not, um, and cycle irregularities, but with uh, our own means being acupuncture and um, Chinese herbal medicine and nutritional therapies and that sort of thing. So. Um, so we're still waiting for Dr. Gelman to join us. So if he can, um, if he can join us in the few minutes, that will be great. Um, oh, I see him right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and let him request to be on so that we can get started. Um, so I know you guys have a lot of questions. Last week, we, we've been doing this actually for a while, but uh, last week with Dr. Wood, we couldn't get through all the questions. We had so many, so um, we're going to, hopefully be able to um, answer everybody's. So if, yeah, if um, I can, if he can, Dr. Gelman can request to be in the live, we'll go ahead and get started. As soon as I see him pop up there, I will go ahead and, and let him in. So I know that um, that time is, is uh, of essence. So we have, we have only an hour to answer all these wonderful questions um, before Instagram cuts us off. So, um, so anyway, we'll go ahead and wait for to get started. I'm gonna see if I could, if I could like invite him in, but I don't see a way to do that. So we'll still wait for a few minutes. Um, in the meantime, uh, I would also like to discuss what to do um, in general when we're, when we're trying to prepare for a medicated cycle as well, not just like IVF or IUI, but things that uh, we get a lot of questions from patients who are um, working with um, reproductive specialists and whether acupuncture is appropriate or when it's appropriate. So we're going to discuss that a little bit as well. Um, and also look at some things that you can do to help with blood clotting or uh, painful periods, that sort of thing naturally that could take sometimes a few months to actually reach maximal value, but when uh, you do get started a little bit earlier, oh, there he is, yay, um, then it actually makes a huge difference in health of the pregnancy too and your, um, and your outcome, whether you're trying naturally or um, uh, with the Medicaid cycle. So there you are. Welcome, Dr. Gelman. Thank you for joining us. Uh, hi, everybody. Go ahead and introduce yourself for those of you guys who don't know Dr. Gelman. Um, we've worked with him for several years. He's he's amazing, very knowledgeable. So um, just give everybody a it's, little. It's a, a little more than several, I would say. <laughs> yeah, like a long time. Over he's been doing this a long time. Oh, I don't know how many years. Long time, yeah. <laughs> long time, long time. I'm Dr. Gelman. I'm from IVFMD in Cooper City. Um, I'm one of the other doctors. There's, I think, I don't know what doctors are there. A bunch of them. Um, so 
you know, okay. I was just one of them. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I'm in the Cooper City office, along with Dr. Mm -hmm. Wood and Dr. Gerkowitz. Um, and uh, obviously, I'm very proud to be here. We've been doing this once a month. And it's just been absolutely a joy to do this. It's great. It's really great. Yeah, it's exciting. I learn something new every time. And I've been doing this 20 years now, <laughs> half my life. And every single time we do this, I'm like, oh, I didn't know that you could do that, you know? So this is so uh, helpful. And we started this at the beginning of the pandemic thinking, well, maybe this is only gonna last a few weeks and we can actually, you know, answer questions since we were not seeing patients in the office. And we just decided that this is so, so tremendously helpful. And we've had such good feedback that we have continued this. So um, thank you guys for submitting your questions and um, being here with us. So, um, so let's uh, get started on a few questions that we have. Um, we'll wait for everyone to kind of come in. And um, just in case you're wondering, uh, I do reproductive acupuncture now in uh, Hialeah Gardens. This is our new office that we're in right now. Um, and that's about, let's see, five minutes south of the Broward County line. So we're literally like in Miami, but very close to Broward. Um, and uh, we also work with... Um, and Miami, Broward, and some patients from even like Palm Beach as well. Uh, so, and some from the Keys. Um, and Dr. Gelman is in Cooper City, and they uh, IVF and also have offices all over, right? You guys are in like all over Florida. <laughs> yeah, they're, they, they're, they're all, all counties. We're in all the counties, and even up in Orlando now, the Orlando area. Oh, really? So, yeah. so it's spreading. There's, yeah, there's a Vieira office. See, I learned something new already, and we haven't even yeah, started. See? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. so let's start with our first question uh, that was submitted earlier. Um, okay, so that was, it was pertaining to um, scarring of routine placenta removed via hysteroscopy on transfer. Um, so I'm, I think that, um, so, oh, does it have an effect on the transfer? That's what the question was, yeah. Well, well the question is, if, if you remove it ahead of time or... Um, so it says scarring, retain placenta, remove via hysteroscopy. What's the effect on transfer? On like upcoming? Well, well, that's what should be done. I mean, that, that needs to be done before a transfer is done. That's why we always do uh, SHGs or saline histograms where we put a little salt water in the uterine cavity and distend the uterine cavity and get a good view of the inside of the walls before an embryo transfer is done. Um, and, you know, patients may have a couple of those along the way, but we always try to get that done within six months of an embryo transfer. And if obviously if somebody's had a miscarriage and we think there may be retained products or old placental tissue still in there, it's very important to have it removed by hysteroscopy. And it's very important to have it done by, you know, an experienced surgeon. You know, so if your OBGYN, you know, is experienced, that's great. If not, you know, one of the reproductive surgeons in our practice are all excellent and well-trained, so they know exactly how to do that without, you know, creating more scar tissue. And, and you know, uh, it may be appropriate in certain cases to repeat the SHG after the procedure, just to be sure. And um, that way we can uh, know for sure that there's no problems in terms of uh, an embryo transfer that's going to occur later on. Um, do you see this condition quite a bit or like, is this something? I would common? say, yeah, you see it. I mean, it's not uncommon. I mean, probably maybe once, once a month, maybe you okay. would see it. So it's, it's not uncommon. Okay. It definitely occurs. Yeah. Okay. So this would be after a, a, a natural miscarriage or? It could be. Yeah. Yeah. It could be. I mean, uh, or the patient may have had a DNC and there's, uh, potential products that are missed and remain okay. there. Um, so it's it's either it's either case. I, I just had a case the other day, uh, last week. A uh, large amount of retained products in there. Oh, so, so yeah. Huh. And I mean, are the signs mostly like that? The HCG does not go down. Um, well, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you may not. Yeah, yeah, that may be a clue. But but there are sometimes there's no elevation of the HCG at all. Um, you know, it's just sort of dead tissue there that, that may be there. And, and um, you see it on the SHG and, you, you know, it's usually, it's usually a brightish, irregular looking tissue in there. Okay. Um, 
and it gives you a clue. So it looks different than a polyp would look. It would look different than a, you know, fibroid might look. Okay. This is, um, so that it's important to address that definitely before. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. That, Anything that's a, that's a in there is not good right? <laughs> to do to have in there before a transfer. No, no, no. You know, I mean, the uterus is your, is the house. You know, it's your, it's the mm -hmm. house for the baby for nine months. Mm -hmm. You know, we 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 want our own homes very clean and, and pristine, right? It's just, you know, it's even more important, obviously, in a pregnancy where you know this baby's going to be nurtured for nine months and you know get all its growth and and healthy you know, blood flow and, and, and all the healthy nutrients, we want to make sure everything's perfect there. So we don't have any complications with the delivery and, the, you know, the, the growth of the baby, because, you know, these things could cause miscarriages or, you know, potentially worse. That's important. Yeah. And, and we recommend for patients to follow up uh, after any loss with their OBGYN or their RE, just to make sure they get that scan because sometimes they don't ever like have the ultrasound afterwards and that's important. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that's why, you know, when they come to, a, you know, the specialty clinics and things, we're going to do that mm -hmm. and then, you know, we're going to address it. So it's not going to get neglected by any means. Yes. So, yes, um, sure. you know, so even if the OBGYN doesn't catch it, you know, it's okay. You know, we'll, we'll catch it. And we, we, we have, um, we use some uh, systemic enzymes as well for patients too that are have had a loss or they've had surgery um, with the you know with the okay of their doctor. Um, we use something called serapeptase uh, that's actually yeah. dissolving yeah. Some of that little you know biofilms and things like that that are crud. I call it the crud. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, I was I was actually I was actually talking to a naturopathic physician about mm -hmm. that about serapeptase and, and he claims that stuff is worse miracles for okay. yeah. Uh, yeah yeah i like um we've used it so much for uh patients with endometriosis as well um, who've had uh problems with implantation and all kinds of issues uh, and so yeah. that has i mean so we've got all kinds of cool stories about that but also the it helps with pain relief it's a natural inflammatory so, um so in yeah. addition to following up and making sure everything's good like that's just some extra little thing um we actually had a patient with um scars several scars on her arms and those scars started fading when she started taking the uh, enzyme treatment which was pretty cool because oh, you can wow. see it you know what's happening on the inside you can't really see it but you can see it on the outside so that was wow. pretty neat so uh you know just an uh kind of I, I think it's nice to do an integrative approach um, and there's definitely things you can do post-surgery, I think, to, to be, you know, with the blessing of, of your surgeon that would be helpful um, in general. And uh, and now we have another question about um, any advice on low motility. On what? Low motility. Sperm, I presume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we try certain things, obviously, it depends how low it is and, you know, what the problem is. Are there other sperm problems uh, on the on the, on the uh, semen analysis in addition to that, or is that the only problem? That's the question. It was just basically specifically about low. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, you know, I mean, the things we would do theoretically is if we think that uh, that's the real issue here is... Um, well, to put the patient on uh, on vitamins, on, on very strong antioxidants, because, you know, we did a study several years ago. I don't know how many years ago that was. Um, uh, I think Dr. Rosef was part of that, too. And, and we looked at these uh, very strong antioxidants from the Coast uh, Reproductive, Coast Science Reproductive Formula. Mm -hmm. And, and there was a lot of um, soldiers, I think, in that study, the guys that came back from uh, the Middle East. And a lot of them, you know, when they initially come back, a very poor sperm function, you know, m uh, pr probably related to, you know, heat exposures, mm -hmm. God knows what chemicals they get exposed to there. And um, within six or eight weeks, we see an increasing motility after putting them on these vitamins, which are pretty strong antioxidants, wow. you know, a lot, a lot of carnitine mm -hmm. in there, and um, yeah. things like that. So, so um, and then, you know, obviously other things like lifestyle adaptations. So we got to make sure, you know, they're not using a laptop computer on their lap. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a big deal. And uh, that's, that's very important. Um, the, uh, you know, cell phone out of the front pocket, that kind of thing, stay out of the hot tubs, usual things. 
So mm -hmm. lifestyles and a healthy diet. I mean, I think that's another thing. And then ultimately, you know, what therapies are going to help them, you know, maybe an IUI, insemination, mm -hmm. where a sperm wash would tend to increase the motility in most cases. Not all, not all. Sometimes a sperm wash doesn't help it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, or maybe the special kind of sperm wash where there's reasonably good motility, I guess, where we could use something uh, called the zymot where the sperm might have be able to swim up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it, it, there's various things we can try. And then obviously, if it's really, really affected and nothing works, I mean, I, you know, IVF to a certain extent, but they have to have a certain amount of motility, you know, in order to complete fertilization though. What's the um, bare minimum? <laughs> well, I'd say one, you know, I mean, one to 2%. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, theoretically, For we see some, or they're twitching. Mm -hmm. and sometimes the embryologist tells us the sperm is twitching. Just, oh. you know, that, 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 that may be, you know, reasonably good enough. So, okay. So for IVF, uh, the parameters are lower for the motility as far as what could be acceptable. Then yeah, I mean, you know, obviously the better, the healthier, the better, the better everything is. Obviously, mm -hmm. just like egg quality, the better that is, the better the mm -hmm. result we're going to get. So anything that's healthier and better is going to work better. You know, it has a better mm -hmm. chance. So it's not that we couldn't try something with really low motility like that. And, you know, obviously they take sperm f directly from the testicles in some cases where there's, mm -hmm. you know, sperm, no sperm in the ejaculate or mm -hmm. there's zero motility in the ejaculate so they take sperm out of there and you know that that sperm you know sometimes it's called twitching twitching sperm mm. um and that works okay with ICSI, icsi we have to actually use the ivf process for that but for someone who's trying naturally or with iui you're definitely going to want more than like one. well we, we would think that i mean if they have a one percent motility and you know i mean it's not likely we're going to get much done naturally with iui mm -hmm. probably not yeah. I mean, I'll never say never because yeah. we see all kinds of things in this field. And mm -hmm. uh, so I will never say never, but the chances are going to be very slim, you know, based on that kind of analysis. Okay. Yeah. So things to improve motility, like fruits and vegetables, obviously eating healthy. You yeah. know, stress can affect. Yeah, I think so. I think so. But, you know, the, the other thing I was going to say with that, is that's one sperm analysis that that's, you know, the, the thing with men is that semen changes, you know, parameters mm -hmm. can change a little bit, you know, because sperm is made in three month blocks of time. You know, maybe, maybe there was a, um, a compounding influencing factor there that occurred with this fellow that really affected his sperm. So, you know, did he have a high fever? You know, did he have mm -hmm. the flu? Did he have something, you know, that could have potentially affected his sperm function in addition. So the other thing I would, should say really is maybe we should repeat it after mm -hmm. six or eight weeks on vitamins or something like that, three months or, you know, give it an adequate amount of time to really see if that's the case. And, you know, that, that, that fellow may need a hormonal workup. He may need to see, be seen by a urologist. You know, if he's got a varicocele or some kind of local problem there, Mm -hmm. um, you know, the urologist may find it and, you know, they may recommend surgery depending on the age and the situation with that couple. So, you know, there's various things we can do at that point to kind of look for causes of it. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you don't find anything. Sometimes you find nothing. We just don't know why that is. It just is. Okay. So um, that's, yeah, I think... You know, we, we say that, well, you can't have too many healthy sperm, right? <laughs> no such thing. So it's good. No, no, yeah. absolutely not. Um, but, okay. it, it, you know, I always, you know, it's, it's always a good thing to see when a guy comes in and he's got a really, really normal semen analysis, including a really normal morphology study, which a lot of guys don't have. You know, mm -hmm. we have very strict andrologists who look at our sperm in our lab. And it's and majority of people have some kind of abnormality. So when you see somebody with a really high count, a really high morphology and, and motility, et cetera, et cetera, forward motion, it's impressive. You know, it really is mm -hmm. because I know how tough they are on grading these things. And you know, when they look at these things, 
Uh, so when we see that, you know, you always expect that the, the male is usually a very, very healthy guy. So, you know, it kind of speaks for health too. A lot of times I see, you know, cause I usually, when I see men, I always do lab work on them too. I don't neglect the men. And that's one of the things I think we do in our practice a lot, um, is we don't neglect the men. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we counsel, you know, I check their cholesterol, I check their testosterone, they do all that stuff. I check them for inflammation, you know, so I can counsel them also about that. Because, you know, if their primary care physician hasn't done any of this, you know, yeah. at least I can guide them and say, listen, hey, look, your cholesterol is 350. You know, yeah. we got to take care of that. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you want to be around, you want to be a father, you want to be around for a while, right? You don't want to have a, you know, a blood clot in your coronary artery. So, you know, yeah. that's the kind of thing we look for. And then, you know, if we think that maybe there's inflammation that's in, impacting their sperm function or whatever else, you know, we're going to tell them about it. So we're going to put them on healthy diets too. So, you know, that's one of the things. And, and if they're overweight, we're going to send them to our lifestyles consultants too. So we're, we're going to, you know, help them not only just sperm wise and pregnancy wise, but, you know, we're going to help them in other ways. That's good. I mean, it seems like that would be helpful, even if you're not even trying to get pregnant, but just to be like, I don't know what, what consists of, you know, a yearly exam for men, like as far as do they do all these hormone workups and things like that? I, I do. I, I, you know, um, I used to, you know, see, you know, not only women, but I used to see men too. You mm -hmm. know, they wanted a, you know, fertility workup, you know, so a lot of women come in, you know, smartly, you know, just for a fertility evaluation, they want to know, are you fertile? How long will life be fertile? They want to get their AMH done and all that. But we do get a fair amount of men sometimes that come in and by themselves. Um, and they want to know, listen, I have a fiance or whatever. I want to know what my fertility is, how my hormones are. And it's, it's kind of good to see that because oh, you know, nice. they're, yeah. they're, they're, very, they're very proactive that way. Yeah. Instead of kind of, you know, wait until they're behind the eight ball. Yeah, that's definitely very helpful. Um, and so, guys, if you're listening, don't be shy. You can actually get yeah. you know, a workout done without going through a fertility cycle, or even if you don't even have a partner, right? You at least do yeah. It. No, I I would I would see men that you know want to come in for that. I mean, there's no yeah. reason not. Very cool. Yeah, and um, we don't focus on the guys so much uh, sometimes, and I think that's important. So. Um, well, it is. I think I think that's one of the bright things about our practice. I know I know all the doctors do that. I think they they mm -hmm. they tend to you know and you know talk to the men too. I mean, it's it's something that we really should be doing because they are you know fifty percent of this whole situation. It's not just women or you know female driven field. It's it's both. Very cool. Um, and so other other things that uh, oh, we actually have a question about um, acupuncture. Um, should you do acupuncture post transfer? And yes. so we do um, include that. And that question comes up a lot as far as what kind of protocol we use um, with our patients. And we've been just doing our tried and true protocol. Um, for, and it's worked for many years. Uh, is basically we, we do acupuncture prior to the IVF cycle. Or, and you can tell me um, your opinion on this. I already know your opinion on this. But uh, basically, we start our, IV, our, our acupuncture about two months prior to a stimulated or medicated cycle, whether it's IUI or IVF, um, because at least two months, like to give us some time. And I always say you spend more time planning your wedding than you do your having a baby. So give us some preconception time to work on things that need to be worked on. Circulation, number one, and uh, number two, stress. And actually those go hand in hand. Um, and then also working with, uh, yeah, diet and obviously a few supplements if needed, not a whole lot. We don't overwhelm, but just some key nutrients that might be lacking. We look at, um, sometimes we look at our, uh, you know, similar things that um, Marta will be looking into, like micronutrient testing and things like that. Even just subclinical vitamin D, thyroid, things like that. Right. So we kind of have some time, right, to work on that and give give the treatment time to work give the supplements time to work um let the nervous system flip from right. to parasympathetic mode right. um and i think most of us are running around with our, like a chicken with our head cut off lately <laughs> with all this stress going on out there yeah. not a bad idea to give yourself some chill time and uh come in get a treatment uh we try to do um twice a week acupuncture prior to like the, the month prior to um the uh stimulation start of stimulation or if you're doing it like the uh, month 
um, prior to your transfer. Uh, and then we continue twice a week till the ultrasound shows a heartbeat. And then once a week during the first trimester. And the reason why we do that is because a, a lot of our patients are very anxious, waiting for all those test results to come back. Uh, like, is the ultrasound going to be, you know, okay? Like, is, are, are my levels okay? Like, what about my progesterone? All these questions, like, it's not over once you get the positive test, you know, as you know, and then, and then looking at, uh, looking forward, we look at, you know, prevention of nausea, vomiting. And that's something that I feel like acupuncture does very well. Um, we can work with these points that we use for nausea, vomiting that have been studied uh, for chemotherapy nausea. And if they work for chemotherapy, they're pretty good for um, acupuncture uh, and, and during pregnancy as well in early pregnancy. So we work with those points. If we do them early on, then we're not going to see as men much nausea or vomiting. Um, yeah, that's, you know, you, know, you know, that's a good point, because a lot of times we kind of forget about that acupuncture for nausea and vomiting because you know mm -hmm. we, we're following the patients in the first you know for the most of the first trimester at least nine ten weeks and we get plenty of people complaining of nausea and and you know we try diclegis other drugs like that that you mm -hmm. know really make you very very tired i mean you know there's nothing really ginger you know we try the usual things that's not there's nothing that great for some people and we probably should recommend acupuncture more for that. Yeah, I mean, I think you and I have a mutual patient who's pregnant with twins right now, and you expect that uh, pre that pregnancy because the APG is so high um, to have lots of nausea, vomiting, and all that. So yeah. we knew because it was starting up already with a queasiness. So we started doing points and actually treatment twice a week, um, and it, as well. And um, within a few days, that has subsided, and also there's no vomiting, that sort of thing. Um, but we also did uh, pressure here, so there were like little little tiny ear seeds that you, I'm sure you guys have seen them. Was we put the uh, that's a protocol that we use for. Uh, acupuncture during the transfer where it comes from Germany. We didn't invent that, but basically there are pressure points that we use inside the ear, just basically on the surface of the ear um, that act as like a little uh, relief because we can use them in the spleen stomach regions and that sort of thing. So there's a whole nausea protocol for the ear as yeah. well that you can wear for five days. You can press those points and actually it's helpful along with pressing this little um, PC6 point uh, that you can, you know, wear like C bands or, or that sort of thing. Um, so we use those uh, throughout, and we've had patients. Our feedback has been that the nausea has been much less. Um, they Which forget air sometimes, but you know we we look at that, and then if we need to introduce B six and pre peppermint, and you know those sort of things, like we have our patients have little essential oil peppermint that they keep with them. So if they get bad smells and stuff like that, they can kind of you know um, use that peppermint to help, to also help with that. Um, but, you know, pretty much uh, when we, we realized that it was working uh, is because we kind of took it for granted, actually. Like, oh, our patients never vomit. They feel great, you know, and maybe it's just because they're nobody ever gets sick anymore. I don't know. Um, and then we, we stopped treating patients in April due to the pandemic. And we had a lot of nausea, a lot of vomiting. <laughs> we were getting calls, you know, like they were feeling horrible. I was trying to scramble to find like what, what we could do to help them um, through telemedicine, which was not easy. So, uh, yeah. you know, so there, yeah. there's definitely a justification for continuing acupuncture. But we do want to do it with someone who is specialized in reproductive acupuncture because there are points that are harmful <clears throat> so you don't want to just you know do any type of acupuncture you need to actually do specific points that are safe during the first trimester um and we don't want to overstimulate these points we're not doing abdominal points so much anymore um we're basically focusing on the epigastric area and the extremities um so so yeah so ask your acupuncturist how many pregnant women do they treat each week and also if they work with fertility patients um and if in your area you um are curious about how to find someone uh that works with uh, pregnant women and works with women who are going through cycles you can go to the aborum.org that's a b o r m like .org. Um, that's our national certifying body that uh we basically, uh, all, all of us on that side are, 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 we all work with facility clinics and we all we, you know, work with pregnant women. So, um, so that's a good place to start. And if you type in your zip code, you should be able to find one of us. Uh, we're pretty much like all over the world now, but you, you could find uh, one of us hopefully um, there is to start. And then the other uh, re resources would definitely be your IVF centers or your uh, gynecologists as well. But just 
just yeah make sure you're you're in good hands yeah that was good that was good yeah um, and anything else you would add with your patients who are um i guess uh any questions that come up about acupuncture that you would like them to know or well they always you know they always ask me should i do it and uh, i always highly recommend it because i think it, it definitely makes a difference in all our you know our cases i mean i think there's definitely some data i was reading something the other day that there was uh, you know a much much higher pregnancy rate after acupuncture uh which really started three months before that's so our goal so, so, so <laughs> even two it's even three months before mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually, they said even up to six months before, but that's that's probably a little excessive. So three months before, for sure, yeah, would be the best outcomes, and and getting it the day of your transfer. For yeah. sure. I, I guess in the whole lifespan of like follicle the follicular development, I mean, it would make sense because there's different stages that happen at different times, you know. Of so. course, because because you know we're you know we're working on you know some of these people have maybe diminished ovarian reserve. So we're trying to recruit the eggs that are remaining there to come up to the surface. And that's going to take several weeks. I mean, that's why we give, you know, DHEA and coenzyme Q10, all these things to try to improve the environment around in the ovary where the little eggs are. And, you know, that it, they need time, you know, three months to try to recruit those eggs up to the surface of the ovary. So then we right. can grab them. Because I always tell patients, we're only as good as what you give us. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Point. I so. I think like if somebody's given a supplement and then told to start a cycle, a retrieval in one month, it's like what? That's not going to make enough. Time. You're not going to. It's usually not. I mean, there are, you know, occasionally cases you have to do like that, but but you know, we we prefer not to. Um, we prefer to give them supplements for at least a couple of cycles at least two months, minimum of two months, preferably three. You know, everybody's anxious when we are too, but you know, we got to do this the right way. This is, a, you know, this is a very expensive, time consuming, emotional process. And we want this working the first time. I think that's the beauty of what you guys do is you, you take that time with the patient and it might not yeah. be, it and might that, not be. You know, and that goes into what we were saying before about, you know, including the males in this which again I, I recommend acupuncture for the men too i mean again mm -hmm. we're not going to neglect the men and you know mm -hmm. and make this one-sided so so i mean the men when they do go they love it they, I they know. It's so hard to they, get they, the they love it. they they feel <laughs> relaxed they feel less stressed yes. you know and there's been cases i think with you we've had a couple of cases where sperm counts improved because yeah. of the reduction in stress yeah, I mean, it's it's great once we um, have them here. And we do have a massage therapy that's excellent. And we just tell them, yeah. you know what? If anything, um, if you don't think that it's going to help your fertility, at least address your low back pain and your stress. Oh, yeah. Everybody's got then, that. Yeah, then magically, <laughs> you know, who knows what will happen. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> uh, and we, we don't need to talk about your fertility every time you're here. We basically just, you know, work on yeah. Oh, no, listen, it's just, it's just a, an excellent adjunct to, to your daily life, yes. um, you know. Yeah, and, and, and I think the, with the Vericacel, we've had some patients do well with uh, Chinese herbs, uh, taking herbs and acupuncture at the same time. They actually have one specific formula for this uh, that actually has cinnamon. And it has several different herbs, but it tastes really good, which helps. Because <laughs> a lot oh, that's of good. it tastes like dirt, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> But but this one actually is pretty good, and and it actually the whole purpose of that formula that they've done research in Japan and China is to actually move blood flow, help circulation in the lower abdomen. So if they've had any blockage or past history of surgery or varicose veins, anything like that, um, they've actually had improvements. So we've had some pregnancies like that, just some taking the the herbs, you know, and and yeah. working with that circulation. So. Um, so you never know. It's worth a try. It really is. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Just like with the vitamins, we've seen some amazing improvements. So, um, you know, these things really work. So I hardly, rec I, I very much recommend all the adjunct therapies that we recommend, such as acupuncture, massage therapy, all those stress reduction procedures. Fantastic. Yeah. It just, you know, people yeah. just don't, people just don't have the time. That's the issue. That's, that's right. the 
we are here uh, six days a week because of that. I mean, we just, there's two of us, obviously, but because um, I couldn't do this all myself. Uh, we um, have Dr. Arasina here, who's awesome. She goes to IVFMD regularly also to do health right. uh, acupuncture during the transfers. Right. Um, and we're here Saturdays, Sunday. She's here every Sunday. I mean, she's amazing. Oh, that's great. Uh, and we alternate Saturdays because really, um, we know everybody has to work. Uh, yeah. Even if you're working from home, you have a lot of craziness going on. So, um, and we're here at seven o'clock usually. So uh, during the weeknights. So, um, so yeah. that hopefully makes it easier because I know some patients have said they're 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 having a hard time. Like, you know. Well, they, we'll have to. We'll just have to figure out how to clone you. And then we can start a mobile service. Oh, yes. And send you around to people's houses, you know, and just yeah. start, you know, that kind of thing, like Amazon. Amazon of, yeah. you know, of acupuncture. That, how about that? Yeah. I mean, that you never have to leave your home, you know. Just, that's right. <laughs> that's it. You know what I'm saying? Just dial yeah. up right on the computer and you're there in an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that, um, you know, in the future, hopefully we're not all replaced by drones, but <laughs> we'll see. Um, but hey, you know, it, it's good to have. Uh, at least like a, a joint effort to like you, you know we have couples that come together and that's their yeah. relaxing that, 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 that's ideal that's ideal when the men go to yeah really so yeah. we we try to work with everyone uh with that and sometimes we have insurance that covers the treatments and other times not we have a membership that gets you know makes it affordable for couples to come as well and family but um but we just try to uh, you know help with this is not forever it's not going to be forever that you're going through right. It's a snippet in time. Mostly it's going to be a big blur when you look back on this five or 10 years later <laughs> and you go, oh, I didn't, you know, but it, it, it feels like it's forever when you're in it, but you will get out of it. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. And, uh, you know, it's about three to six months of really buckling down and getting serious about yeah. some lifestyle changes. Uh, and we've had patients quit smoking. They change their diet. I know you've seen that too. They've lost weight and it's like, oh, yeah. they, it is great. And you see the outcome with the quality, you know. Oh, yeah. And the patients, and they say, the first thing they say is, I feel so much better. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, because so sometimes you really don't know how bad you feel until you do something positive and you feel so much better. That's, yes. And they're also like, how come I didn't know about this before? <laughs> like, yeah. I, because sometimes it takes a certain thing in your life to happen where it brings you to, the, you know, a, a different um yeah you know, fork in the road. So we, we work with wherever you are in that journey. And, uh, and some patients will come and say, I've already gotten my eating um, and all my diet plans like uh, under control, I eat really well, um, and all of that. But we find that you need a lot more protein, you need electrolytes, things like that when you're going through fertility treatment as well. So it's a different, you might think that you're doing the right thing. But sometimes you do need a second opinion of really, like, hey, you know, if there's some tips that could be helpful and some little tweaks that can make a big difference. So so that's what's so good about you guys having a lifestyle um, uh, component, which is missing for, I think, in a lot of treatments. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that, those, those uh, professionals are great in our practice. And the um, patients really appreciate what they do for them. And, and, they, and they also the same thing, how great they are. And some people just have amazing transformations. Yeah. That, amazing, yeah. amazing transformations just with diet and exercise plans and things that we give them. It really, it really makes a big difference in their lives. Well, we are here to help. Um, are you still doing, Dr. Gelman, are you still doing virtual visits as well as in person? Oh, absolutely. Or? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah. We do them all the time. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so no matter, like we had someone reach out to us from, I don't know where she, she's in the Midwest somewhere, um, from listening to our podcast. And I know you've been on the podcast a while, um, the PCOS podcast. It's on the link in the bio if you guys ever want to listen to those episodes. Um, but uh, with um, the move and all the craziness, I haven't been as active on my podcast lately. But, um, but you know, just, just searching for help. So if you're even in a different state or a uh, different country, right, you guys work with other oh, sure. different countries, they, they can still do virtual visits, which is really cool. So Yes, it is. So we've continued those too, just to help with patients who um, might need a little bit, bit of advice. So um, we're still, you know, continuing that even though we are seeing patients in person uh, as well, and we're still following all the precautions and preparing for that third wave or whatever wave we're in. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully not. But uh, you know, when school starts again. Hopefully not. Yeah, that's the only issue is the schools. Yeah. Uh, that's the big worry here for us, yeah. I think. Right. So what, what's going to happen? What's going to happen with that? I mean, now you know the NFL. 
And yeah. now all these teams are testing positive. You know, they thought they were doing so great. And now all of a sudden there's a couple of teams that they're all positive. Oh. And, uh, it's, it's craziness. You know, it's just, it's just absolute nuts. Yeah. Yeah. So we're still, you know, following all the precautions we can. Um, and, but we are, um, we are still continuing to provide care. We, I know you guys have provided care throughout the whole pandemic as well. Uh, because, yeah, we did. You know, we, we are, you know, the, the show must go on, is that what they say in Hollywood? Um, you know, it has to, it has to be done. I mean, I think, you know, we're, you know, uh, we need it. And, and obviously in, in these situations, and, and, you know, people have to go through fertility treatment. They can't delay and delay and delay. But, you know, obviously we have to use all the appropriate precautions, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and be safe and do this in a, in a very, in a very safe and, you know, safe way. So, so I think as of now, obviously everything is still going on just the way it normally would. And there's no reason to think otherwise, hopefully. Uh, right. And that brings the point around that all the lifestyle things that we say, like those are all helpful for helping with the immune system support and all of that. Uh, and yeah. they find come out and said that you think you know like there's some things you can do to help your immune system so just being you know eating fresh fruits and vegetables trying to focus on your health this has been a big year for that i think so, um and fertility is a huge portion of that um so uh so if you can help improve quality and cellular health you're actually helping to improve the rest of your body too you know so um so that's why it's important to, to address it uh, and also yeah for men as well so uh hopefully we're going to be seeing a lot of good things that will come out of this as far as in the future uh where everyone's kind of paying a little bit more attention to to things they can do to support their own immune systems Correct. and health so if you guys have any questions feel free feel free everyone's been kind of quiet yeah, so, yeah um, we need some questions yeah, come on. Uh, bring it on, guys. Um, and then if you uh, want to ask your question in a different way, you can actually uh, email Dr. Gelman, right? If you want to give out yep. your email address, uh, uh, is it Dr. Gelman at IVFMD.com, I think? Yeah, yeah. dr.gelman at IVFMD.com. Okay, yeah, the dot. Um, and then I'm at fduro at Florida Complete Wellness, uh, or you can message me through Instagram as well. Um, and Dr. Gowan, you have an Instagram too. So you're, you're a yep. Broward Fertility expert, right? Yeah. So yep. Broward Fertility expert, right? Broward yeah. Fertility, yeah. Yes. So Broward Broward Fertility. Fertility. yes. Um, and so he's usually really good about getting back and emailing, uh, which is awesome. So and um, getting in touch. So, um, so if you have any questions at all, let us know. Um, I guess if we uh, we're going to wrap it up soon, actually, if we don't, if we don't see any more questions, we just had a few of them earlier. Um, anything else, any imparting words of wisdom you'd like to give, like for anyone who is thinking of embarking on a cycle or has questions? Well, I think, I think the thing that, you know, the things that we covered, I think general health and, and, you know, uh, and those are the key things about all this and, you know, coming in as early as you can to get assessed, to see what your fertility, you know, issues might be if there are any at all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as I said before, even if you want to come in and just get checked and say, listen, am I able to get pregnant? Am I healthy? Am I egg, you know, do I have eggs? You know, how do I, how my ovaries look? Do I have a fibroid? You know, this kind of thing. You know, those are good things. I mean, those are things we can do. Uh, if you're having problems with your periods too, maybe you have a hormone problem, you want to come in early and just get checked and see if that's going to influence anything that goes on, you know, with you trying to get pregnant, you know, that kind of thing. So the earlier we see you, the better, the younger, obviously mm -hmm. we see you, the better. So, you know, even if obviously you want to consider freezing your eggs, that's always a good idea, you know, up to age 38. Somebody just asked a question. How often do you check thyroid, prolactin, AMH after you check once? Well, it depends on the, on the case. I mean, you know, prolactin, thyroid, we check a lot. You know, we, we obviously want to check that initially before, you know, during your initial evaluation. Um, and then once you're pregnant, you're obviously going to get a thyroid profile and, you know, to make sure your TSH is 2.5 or less. So sometimes if, you're, if your TSH is even in the normal range for a non-pregnant individual, if it's a little elevated, you know, above 2.5, 3-ish, Mm -hmm. three or higher, I might put people on Synthroid just to keep it lower, uh, just because some of the studies obviously show that, you know, lower TSH in the first 
trimester was better for intelligence, uh, IQ, et cetera. Uh, so we, we want to protect oh, that. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, AMH, uh, that's something, you know, again, that can vary. I mean, that, you know, can be depending on the issue. Again, depending where your AMH was done. You know, we've talked about this a lot on these, on these sessions, um, making sure you get an accurate AMH because mm -hmm. many times we've seen inaccurate AMHs that, you know, can, uh, can really affect how somebody reacts because uh, they may be told that they're not fertile and, you know, they're in their early 30s, their AMH is extremely low. And yet that person comes in and, you know, we assess them and we look at their ovaries and do an actual follicle count and check their AMH at a, at a good lab. And it really isn't low, you know, mm -hmm. so that situation can exist. So, you know, an AMH should be checked at a good lab that has a good standard. Um, and I always recommend Unilab and, and Davey. That's, that's the endocrine lab we use, which has standardized the AMHs for all age groups. So we have a very, very narrow standard about where that should be based on, you know, 10,000, 20,000 people, whatever they, they did to put this graph together. Um, so we know where an AMH should be, but it has to be done in conjunction with, you know, looking at their ovaries and looking, you know, counting antral follicles and, you know, assessing their menstrual history. So it's, it's not just a solitary level. It's looking at other things too. So again, that'll depend upon the patient's age and, you know, when they, are they going through fertility treatment now, or are they going to wait a year, you know, are they going to do it in four months, six months, you know, that kind of thing will may influence how often we do the AMH valley. Um, and is there any cutoffs as far as, um, <clears throat> you know, you should not do IVF or, I mean, it, it will tell you kind of, you know, what, what that is or, well, what, it's, do you, it's, look at that? you know, that's that's always a big debate. I mean, that, that, you know, certainly under one is not a great indicator for success. Although we've had patients go through under one all the time, um, mm -hmm. and again, depending on their age, you know, the the main issue really may not be the AMH so much. It may be the chronological age of the patient, the female patient. That's probably the best indicator of how successful we're going to be. But you know, it's it's all part of it. You know, we have to look at a lot of things together. Somebody else said something must eat meat because baby is not growing as expected. Oh, do you have enough cases that okay. women are vegan must eat meat because the baby is not growing as expected? Do I ever what? I don't see the Oh, if the women are there. vegan, but they must eat well, meat because the baby. Um, I, you know, that's more for an OBGYN to answer. You know, because we're we're not um, we don't see the patients after you know nine weeks, so you know the main growth is in obviously the second and third trimester. So I mean that's more for an OBGYN physician to answer that one. But definitely, yeah. we recommend a nutritionist though. If someone is vegan and trying to conceive. Yeah. That. Um, oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean that, if that person is vegan, yeah, you're going to see a, a lifestyle one of our lifestyles consultants or a nutritionist to get that advice so that, you know, these things don't happen in pregnancy. But, you know, that question, I guess, is more directed for somebody who's further along. Yeah, definitely. But even, even trying to get pregnant, we'd say if you're vegan, I think, we, I, I think that I was vegetarian for 10 years and um, definitely it's, there's, there's different um, nutrient needs that, that happen uh, when you're not eating meat at all. Um, and so it's important to speak to somebody uh, if you are trying to conceive and you're vegetarian or vegan, um, whether it's a nutritionist or yeah, lifestyles, uh, and Marta is the doctor of nutrition, I think. And, you know, trying to like make sure you have a plan because you don't want to miss B6, B12, any of those really key nutrients that could affect pregnancy uh, and that sort of thing. So, um, takes a little extra work for sure yeah. yeah yeah um and so uh let's see do we have any more questions here no, no i don't know hmm. um you have an endocrinology background you were, you're, you were mainly doing endocrinology before that was as far as working with thyroid issues and that sort of thing or have you or before reproductive endocrinology or were you doing 
endocrinology, reproductive endocrinology, I guess. No, I was, I was always, I was always doing reproductive endocrinology. That was my main training and fellowship and things mm -hmm. like that. But, you know, obviously as part of it, we did a lot of thyroid stuff too, uh, which we don't, I don't do very much anymore. I just, you know, basic things, but um, yeah, I mean, it's all part of the, the training. Yeah, thyroid is huge, though. I say, I mean, there's so many people have, it have questions, about it. and yeah, it gets so over. Yeah, it's most people are very. Yeah, yeah, then they're like, well, especially this is especially if somebody has has antithyroid antibodies, you know, that's always a, a a clue possibly that you know there could be issues of autoimmune problems that this patient may have. So, so that's one of the things we always look for. Um. So, yeah, somebody just asked another question. Could Avadrel fail to make you ovulate? Um, on occasion, you know, we may not see something, uh, an ovulation is great. You know, I, we don't use it um, in IVF. We use it in IUI cycles. Um, so we like, we prefer regular HCG or, or a Lupron trigger. Um, but Avadrel has been used in other clinics and things like that with, with, with good success. Um, have I ever seen it fail to make somebody ovulate? Not to my knowledge, not, um, not anything recent, of any, any recent that I can remember. Uh, we've had some bad lots of HCG though, uh, where we, we think it did not work. Uh, where somebody's, uh, you know, beta HCG level after the HCG wasn't high. No, they may not. It may, uh, that was, uh, I think, a while ago. That was a bad HCG, okay. bad uh, a Navarol or Pregnol. One of those drugs was not working efficiently. So it happens, but I, I've never heard it with Avadrol, actually. Okay. Oh, interesting. Yes. Um, so as far as the Famara versus Clomid, you're still, you know, kind of seeing what is your, um, how, do, how do you determine, like, who, who does what as far as that? those two go well you know it's just it's almost it's almost like personal preference now i mean nobody i mean very few clomid cycles i do um you know as opposed to years ago i mean i think we use so much femora because it has a, such a short half-life it's in and out of your system very quickly and it doesn't interfere possibly with endometrial thickness and it doesn't do any of those things although i just saw a recent study that that the endometrial thickness really should be, you know, I think it was seven or eight to be ideal. Um, so, you know, you don't want, you don't want um, Clomid month after month after month, possibly, you know, accumulating in the body because that's a long half-life and it could mm -hmm. thin the endometrial lining because it's an anti-estrogen by chemical makeup. It works, it blocks estrogen. So that's how it fools the brain into thinking you're low in estrogen. So your, your brain turns out these hormones to stimulate ovulation. So, but femora, you know, doesn't have that effect. So you can use it multiple times. You know, it, it really has a great, um, um, you know, side effect profile too. It has no side effect really. So uh, the only thing is it's not FDA approved for that use, which I don't know why I haven't approved it. Not yet. Wow, it's been a while. Do you think? <laughs> no. No, I mean, you know, many years ago, they, 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 they actually sent us all letters stating that it was, we shouldn't be using it because uh, it was only approved for breast cancer. You know, it's approved for breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So um, they sent all the fertility places letters uh, not to use it, you know, because it could cause birth defects if you're pregnant, you take it. Mm -hmm. so, so obviously, you got to make sure you're not pregnant. Well, out of your system by that you're starting it on your period so it's way out of your system by the time that yeah. happens so yeah, yeah. cuz somebody just asked in one cycle if letrozole fails once do you recommend to take it again or do you wait for the next cycle let's see if it fails once well i don't know what that patient means but in other words if you go through the whole cycle and you don't get pregnant do you do it again yeah probably uh or if in one cycle you don't ovulate i mean sometimes Actually, sometimes I've used combined Clomid and Letrozole together. There's been studies on that, too, especially in resistant PCO patients. I've tried that um, with, a, with a good effect, with a good okay. effect. Oh, well, that's yeah. good. Thank yeah. you, uh, 
me bear for your questions. They're awesome. And uh, I think that, yeah, I mean, it, it, a lot of it is, is definitely trial and error too, because you, you don't know what you're going to respond to until you try. <laughs> not, not really, you know, I mean, you, you, know, you would expect, you know, most of the time, but there are people who don't respond, absolutely, mm -hmm. to either Clomid or Letrozole. All right. Awesome. Well, um, so you can reach us at uh, IVFMD.com for Dr. Gelman and myself at Florida Complete Wellness. Dot com or you, you can message us we're getting to the end of our q a time um and so i hope that everybody enjoyed this um it's been a little um bit of uh you know a quiet week every i we didn't get a whole lot of questions but we'll be back yeah. next month and next uh, month. also that you can um message us or you can reach out and give us a call if you want to do virtual visits or in person we're here for you right um, and we'll look forward to your questions uh, next month. So thank you, Dr. Galman, so much. My pleasure. It was great. It's always great to join you. Yeah. And, and, um, it's always fun. We always, we always find good things to talk about. Yeah, for sure. It, you, can, you can never learn enough. Well, honestly, we're fertility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful, safe week. You too. We look forward to seeing you soon. And good, good luck in your new office. Thank you. I'll be doing a little uh, video tour this week. So we finally got oh, good. Make sure you send it to us. Thank you. And one day come visit, you get an acupuncture treatment. Yeah. <laughs> I will. I will. I need it for my back. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Go. Thank you. Good night.